Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. I was hoping to get a double upload out, there could have been a double upload, the amount of news that we've got today has been absolutely crazy, so I'm going to try and cram everything in as much as I can, but it's the one today, maybe two tomorrow, and tomorrow there will be the last preview of the season. Ah, it's been such a great season, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's been one hell of a bumpy season, that's for sure. Um, but the preview for Chelsea versus Bournemouth, that last game at Stamford Bridge, that will be taking place tomorrow. Alongside that, we will see what happens during the day in terms of news and all of that. So we'll see when, if there is going to be a double upload. Make sure you're here. Make sure you're subscribed. You've got the notification bell on. And whenever it drops, you will be notified and you'll know if there's one or two. But make sure you're here for it. Much appreciated. Let's get cracking. Let's not waste time. So as soon as I uploaded yesterday, news came out. And I was like, well, oh, typical, typical. Every time I post, something happens five minutes later. It always happens, right? So we're going to discuss it. Let's start off there. The latest on Michael Elise. Michael Elise is still appreciated by Chelsea. This was put out by Fabrizio Romano. And he, they, you know, they were talking about Manchester United as well. And there are other clubs that are keeping their eyes on this situation in terms of Michael Elise. But um, there was a little bit of a... No, I wouldn't say backlash. It's not a backlash. But there were some people online, specifically online, um, saying, Nah, Elise, now nah, we're good. We've got about 85 right wingers. We don't need another one. I want to be honest here. If Michael Elise is offered, right, on one condition, we don't get an injury situation with him, right? And look, with the injury situation at Chelsea, I'd like to think that all of that will be resolved for next season. Because what we saw this year cannot happen again. Let's be honest, it cannot happen again. So because of that, if we get a medical department and a regime in place that is going to prevent everyone from getting injured every five minutes, then maybe Michael Alizé will, will survive. If I'm offered a fit Michael Alizé, I am taking him any day of the week. Who wouldn't? Let's be honest here, right? And I've given critique to Madueke throughout a big portion of the season. And towards the latter stages, I've given him praise. And I've had him in my starting lineups and I've done all of that. But let's be real. Let's be honest. If you're given the choice between Olize or Madueke, who are you taking? If you're given a choice of a midfield three behind the striker of Nkunku, Cole Palmer and Olize, you could switch and alternate however you want. Or... Mudrik, Nkunku, and Palmer. Who are you taking? Let's be honest. You're taking my corner, say. Of course. The one fear, like I've said, is his injury record. But when he's fit and he's playing, player. Which is why yesterday I was shocked that Didier Deschamps for France did not call him up. Now, he's not been called up for a national team yet, but that could have been it. And they didn't call him. So um, that baffled me. Then again, France have, have the depth of an all-you-can-eat buffet. It just never stops. <laughs> so I get it. Which is why other countries now, he's got three other options, like I've mentioned yesterday. We'll see what happens. But I would take him all day long. Now, how much would that cost? Is there a release clause? Apparently there is a release clause. Apparently it is the margin of around 60 million. I'm sorry, a player like that, I'm taking all day long. This is the sort of level that I think for player and for club that we do need. And that's where I stand on it. Let me know what you think down below. Would you take Michael Alize if he were to be available? Bearing in mind the injury situation, of course. If he stays fit, would you? Let me know. Let me know down below. Much appreciated. Um, I do want to mention one thing before we get into the rest. Yesterday, I spoke about... Uh, it's just, I just got the, 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 the brainwave right now. Um, about the, the rule that FIFA were looking into that they might implement in regards to 
giving defeats and losses to teams that are guilty of their fans doing racist things in the in the ground. And then, as much as I was saying that was a good idea, there was one thing that, correctly so, I didn't I didn't think about, which you guys in the comments lo you, you told me about, and I thought, oh my god, you know what? They've got a point. They got a point. But I want to clarify it. There were some of you that said, Eunice, no, it's not a good idea. And here's why. Because there could be fans that could pose as fans of the other team to get them in trouble and to get them to lose the game, right? And when I, when I read that, I was like, wow. Firstly, I didn't think of that. Funny. And secondly, imagine if that happened. <laughs> Imagine, imagine for example, right, um, Chelsea Tottenham, and then a couple of Chelsea fans go into the Tottenham end, pose as Tottenham fans, say racist things, then Tottenham get punished. That's what a few of you are saying, and it makes sense. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. But I don't know how it is in other countries. Now, this is where we're talking FIFA, a global thing. I don't know in other countries how it is. But here in England, there is a case of... The fans that get into the home crowd, firstly, you can't, you ain't getting in, let's just say you're not getting in unless you've got a home ticket, a home season ticket, a home membership, whatever it is, right? Chances are, if you're an imposter, there is a chance that you could get caught. Just saying. And then the away crowd, right, to get home fans into the away section um, is actually sometimes even more difficult because the away section um, is very concise. It seems the away crowd tends to know each other a lot. There tends to be loads of connections um, with an away crowd because it's smaller and it tends to be the same faces that go away every time. So um, in England, that's the culture. Um, and it's, it's looked on like the fans that attend in terms of the administration and the systems and the way that it's done is monitored. Um, so I don't know if the other countries are a little loose, if they are loose then anyone can get in, if anyone can get in and of course this can happen. So it's an interesting thing that you guys have said and yeah, that could be a sticking point, just saying. Anyway, let's move. Um, Chelsea, we have an award. Yes, Chelsea have an award. Amazing. In, in a season like we've had, we have an award. What is it? Here it is. Of course, of course. It's getting cold, it's getting chilly in here. Cole Palmer wins the award as Premier League Young Player of the Year. Chelsea star has scored 22 goals and provided 10 assists in his Premier League this season. And there he is with the Premier League Young Player of the Year award. Absolutely deserved. Cole Palmer, it's actually quite incredible that he's done this. In the circumstances that Chelsea were in this season, for him to do all of that and get these awards, imagine him in a good season. Imagine, imagine if Chelsea were actually killing it, right? We were up there and Cole Palmer was doing Cole Palmer things. He'd be up for player of the year instantly, instantly. Favourite, the favourite, without a doubt. He is such a top footballer, such, such a good footballer overall. And honestly, um, it's such a pleasure having a player like Cole Palmer. It really is. So big up to Joe Shields, <laughs> firstly, for identifying this guy and getting him through the door. And big up to Cole Palmer, because Cole, you've got such a big future ahead of you, mate. Such a big future. Um, if you just keep your head down and keep doing what you're doing, um, I don't like to bring any more. I don't like to bring comparisons, but there was one player at Chelsea with a lot of flair that carried this team when needed in many, many, many occasions. And I think you know who I'm on about, a uh, little guy. <laughs> not Zola, the one that came after. <laughs> um, Cole Palmer can, can, can go down that route. He can. He has what it takes. So, huge congrats. Now, this piece of news has a little bit of a sticking point. What is it? Well, we weren't meant to know today. Yeah, we weren't meant to know this. Check this out. Chelsea have deleted the Young Player of the Year article. Believe it was supposed to be announced tomorrow. Great. We can't do anything right. <laughs> now, listen, um, what I think happened here, I think that what, what clearly, clearly, clearly what's happened here, right? Someone at Cobham, who's in charge of this, um, wanted to get the, the, the work done early because it's Friday. 
and he didn't want to come into work on Saturday because it's the weekend, right? Let's just say that. And um, because of that, he thought, oh, let me just let me just post it now and I can go home and spend the time with the kids and the, fi- and the wife and the family and I don't need to worry about work till Monday. Well, no, sorry, mate, you're coming in. <laughs> you're, you're coming in for two things. You're coming in tomorrow on a Saturday because you're posting the article and you're coming in because we've got to discuss your job, mate. Um, you could be in trouble, just saying. Because, uh, yeah, the Premier League uh, were not meant to get this out today and someone at clearly someone at Cobham's gone enter <laughs> and posted it so whoever that is good luck mate I hope I hope you keep your job um let's move let's move and talking about keeping a job now this is a guy that can keep a job who I'm about to mention is a guy that can keep a job this is keeping a job check this out Brian Pullman secretly hints his favourite manager during his time at Chelsea. Now, this is Brian Pullman alongside the Sky Sports journalist. I forgot his name, um, but very well known. But Brian Pullman on the left has been working at Chelsea for 56 years. 56 years. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, funnily enough, in that article, uh, not article, in this clip, um, he did mention who his uh, favourite Chelsea manager is. And, um, well, he didn't, he didn't mention it directly. He told the journalist in his ear before the cameras were rolling. And, um, yeah, um, someone that likes custard creams. I think we know who, of course, of course, the special one. Um, but this is the clip. At Cobham today, where Chelsea say goodbye to Brian, who's been at the club for, well, this has more than 40 years. It's 56 years. Um, and the coaching staff, Poch, everyone were giving him um, a complete round of applause and and all sorts. Um, so big up to everyone, you know, at the club that there that done that. Um, massive, massive achievement, Brian Pullman. Good luck in your retirement, mate. Um, and thank you for your service. 56 years is, is, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So big up. He was there 1968. I mean, bloody hell. He's, he's seen it all. He has literally seen it all. So huge shout out to, um, to Brian and good luck in retirement. Now, um, administrative news coming out of Chelsea. Um, we feared this was going to be bad, but turns out it's not too bad. Check this out. Exclusive. Chelsea increase the GA season general admission season ticket prices for the first time in 13 years. But 5% rise is much better than many fans feared. No change to concessions. 5% is the increase in the season tickets going into next season. Um, And look, personally, there's no issue with me on this. Because it goes in line with inflation. I've always said, much like Man City put their prices up by 5%. Other clubs have done it by 4, 5, 6%. That's the margin. Um, Chelsea haven't put their prices up in 13 years. The Roman Abramovich era, we didn't need to. Um, <laughs> but because inflation has gone up, if there ever was going to be a price increase, and I've said this before, I do reckon 4, 5% is the way that you do it. Any more, and it becomes a really bad decision. If it was more, I would be on here criticising it hard. Um, there were rumours that it could be up to 20%, if you remember. That would have been... Sh- I would have, If that happened, I think everyone would have kicked off. 5%, like I've said, 13 years, no increase, in line with inflation. That's expected. It's expected. As long as it's not more, cool. So that's the latest coming out of the club. Um, so if you're buying your season tickets, I mean, there's a waiting list, I'm sure. But if you're getting a season ticket, you're going to be paying, I think it's £1.20 or something per match day more that's basically it so um there's the latest with chelsea let's move to elsewhere what's going on here's the latest with yesterday i was mentioning thomas tuchel was on course to stay at Bayern munich well yep that's all in the bin no agreement tuchel will leave fc Bayern at the end of the season Bayern bosses were pushing for him in the last days as they want him to stay Tuchel was willing to stay under certain circumstances, but there was no total agreement and no agreement about the new contract duration. Tuchel rejected. Tuchel and Bayern, it's over now. Unbelievable. (laughs) Unbelievable. And fair play to Thomas Tuchel here. Bayern Munich have handled this horribly, 
horribly. How do you go out and talk to five other managers who all turn you down and then you try and keep Thomas Tuchel? That was where you just had to surrender and give him what he wants. Give him what he wants. Because now who you got? They're, they're actually going to end up with either De Zerbi or Eric Ten Hag. Like, it's actually going to happen. I feel sorry for Bayern Munich. Well, I don't now because they've done this to themselves. They have absolutely managed this horribly. Now, Thomas Tuchel, what does it mean for him? He has actually tried to get what he wanted. He, he couldn't from Bayern Munich. So he's like, yo, I'm out. See you later. You didn't want me anyway. So if you're not going to give me what I want to stay, then I'll bounce. Here's latest with TT. Thomas Tuchel will be free for a new challenge in the summer. He wants a comeback in the Premier League. His management is in contact with Manchester United. There could be a direct swap here. They actually could. I do think they'll go for De Zerbi first, then Ten Hag, but Ten Hag could be heading in the opposite direction. It could be just a direct swap between United and Bayern Munich. It could be. But, yeah, um, I'll, I'll be real. Uh, this is where I said yesterday, look, Chelsea, if Chelsea were playing badly, still playing badly, we would be in one hell of a situation. If we were still 10th and struggling and not winning and, and what we've seen the last few weeks didn't, wouldn't hap didn't happen, I would absolutely be all over this right now. A hundred percent. You're crazy to not, right? But like I mentioned yesterday, Chelsea are in one hell of a pickle now. Like it's actually looking like it's best to hold on to Poch, right? Well, it means that Tuchel will be going to Manchester United. And this one's going to sting. This one's going to sting. Absolutely going to sting. Um, I would have loved for him to just stay at Bayern Munich. Deep down, I was kind of hoping for that. But it's not looking like it's happening. So let me know your thoughts. Tuchel, I see only one destination, and that is United. There's no one else in the Premier League that I think will take him um, or needs him because they've all got managers. And talking about others that have managers, let's dive right into the team that's replacing Klopp. Arnie Slot has confirmed, saying, I can confirm that I will be new Liverpool manager next season. Slot signed his LFC contract today. So that is Arnie Slot. He is leaving Feyenoord and heading off to Liverpool. Um, I've said this before. I think that's a bad decision, but we will wait and see. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. There's not been a good history of Dutch managers, um, especially in the Premier League. I don't know how this one's going to go. You're going to have to, you big shoes, big shoes to fill, big boots to fill. Um, so yeah, Arnie Slot, Liverpool. I can't lie, deep down as a Chelsea fan, I'm happy because I, I don't feel like it's going to work out as well as maybe some Liverpool fans think. So we'll see. We'll see anyway. It might, you never know, but I don't think it will. So that's that. Um, that's Liverpool. Other places where they've got change of managers before we wrap up. Official statement by Juventus. Juventus cite Allegri's behaviour during their Coppa Italia win as the reason for the immediate dismissal. He was sent off in the victory over Atalanta and furiously took off his club jacket and tie. The departure follows certain behaviours during and after the Coppa Italia final that the club considered not compatible with the values of Juventus. That is absolute rubbish. I'm saying it now. Rubbish. Allegri, why do you think Allegri acted the way he did? He's not stupid. We're not stupid. You think they sacked him because of that? Come on. They've been talking with Thiago Motta for how long? The deal with Thiago Motta is basically done. <laughs> He's going to be the next Juventus manager. We all know this, which is why some Chelsea fans that were going, let's get Thiago Motta. It's not happening. He's going to Juve. We know this. So now they've sacked Allegri, oh, because he didn't act professionally in that Coppa Italia win, by the way. Crazy, crazy. No, clearly they don't want him to stay. Clearly something's happened behind the scenes or they don't get along anymore or something. And it's been the case for weeks. They've approached Thiago Motta. That deal's about to get done. And now they've sacked Allegri. And they've tried to find whatever catalyst they could to justify it. And this was it. So, yeah. Good luck to Allegri and good luck to Thiago Motta. Now, talking about a club where it's not so, uh, not so nice either, to wrap up, Barcelona. Internal talks ongoing right now at Barca. Tense situation with President Laporta unhappy with Xavi. Xavi's recent words on financial situation and also on Vita Roque. Key points. Rafa Marquez remains high on the club's list, still waiting for final decision on Xavi. This is crazy because Xavi was meant to stay. Um, 
And that looked like it was all done. At first he was meant to leave, and then they said, no, okay, we're going to keep him. And he said, I'm staying. And everything reversed. Cool. Well, now he's going again. What's happening to these clubs? What's happening? Bayern Munich, mess. Barcelona, mess. What's happened? What's happened to all of you? I mean, yeah, us as well. But at least we had a, we had a reason. Yeah, we had we had government intervention. Yeah, we had the UK intervene our, into our football club. We had an entire state, an entire nation. Yeah, intervene with our affairs. You guys have just self sabotaged. <laughs> Bayern Munich have just self imploded. Barcelona have for quite a while self imploded, and this is just madness, incredible. So where will Xavi end up? Maybe he'll end up at Brighton. <laughs> Let's end it there. Let me know where you think he might end up. I don't know where he's going to end up. So let me know your thoughts. Much appreciated. And I will see all of you tomorrow for, like I've said, maybe one, maybe two. You never know. So we'll wait and see. But for sure, the preview of Chelsea versus Bournemouth. And like I said, not just that game, but I will preview the final day. It'll be a final day preview because it's the final day of the season. All games are taking place at the same time. We've got a title race to look at as well as the Europa League spots. Champions League's already done. Relegation as well. We get to find out who the last team to get relegated will be. I think, actually, let me verify this quickly before we jump off, uh, let's say, jump off the air as it's uh, deemed on a professional level. Um, but the bottom of the table, yeah, loot and you're done. Yeah, Nottingham Forest have survived. So there's nothing to play for down there. <laughs> <laughs> basically the, the only way that Luton survive is if Nottingham Forest lose Luton win and they win about 13 nil yeah 12 12 nil actually they got to win 12 nil so yeah Luton are going down so I'll preview all of that tomorrow make sure you're here for that much appreciated and I'll see all of you then thank you so much people for watching I'll see you tomorrow take care and peace